Hello comrades, Kamisab Bro here today. And today I'm going to do kind of a tutorial on how things work in making history. A lot of people have asked questions on how to balance your economy. Um, and truly, compared to a lot of games, it's a lot simpler than you would think. Let's take Mother Russia, for example. At the beginning, Russia has positive arms. You can tell because it's green. Uh, negative goods, minus 65. Minus 8 food, 82 steel or metals, 123 coal, and minus 31 oil. So, how can we get those positive? Well, you have a couple of different ways to do that. First off, every country well, most countries in the game have resources, and this is what they look like right here. Um, you know, obviously, we have them all over our country, and uh, it's definitely no trouble finding resources in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union is also is actually one of the countries that has the most industrial potential, uh, self-sustaining wise, without having to conquer any more land. Assuming everyone leaves it alone the Soviet Union can actually become incredibly rich. So, we're going to go ahead and put that to maximize, which by doing that, you can see our output is currently 25. If we put it up to maximum, within 50 turns, it goes up one per turn, it will be at 75. Uh, so, if our output rate is 30, at 50 so 80 roughly is what we would be looking at and then we've got areas like Poltava here which have more uh, maximum output so yeah we're gonna maximize a couple of these and then we're gonna watch them in action we're not gonna industrialize anything yet um, we're just literally going to show what the effects that has so now that we've done that let's take a look at food as you can see, Russia has minus 8 food right now. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more difficult for countries like Russia or, well, even a lot of the European powers have trouble keeping that positive, which is understandable. You can start by getting the most heavily populated areas of your country. For example, uh, Muscovy. This particular region has the largest population in the Soviet Union. Considering the Soviet Union's 155 million, and this alone is 12. So, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. So, what you can do is upgrade food production, which you do by doing that. You just click on it, go to upgrade, upgrade. Now, by upgrading, it costs more money to build that. As you can see, the cost per turn. It's going to be 594,000 for this particular region, 680,000 for that region, 1.1 million for that region and so on so forth those work with fortifications and transportation infrastructure as well keep that in mind when you're upgrading if you upgrade too much stuff you may very well hurt yourself however when I play the Soviet Union to be honest what I do is I go straight to this right here you see infrastructure click that go to resource producers and then I just go down the list, maximizing each one by one. And then, you know, so on and so forth, you get the idea. And then I go over here to regions. Now, that little thing we were just looking at the, with the uh, agricultural upgrades and the fortification upgrades and the infrastructure upgrades, so on, is right here in this screen as well under regions. So we can see right here how much food is supplied from this region how many people or manpower units you have in this particular region, what level the agriculture is, what level the fortifications are, what level the transportation is. So I would just go down the list and doing this. Not necessarily caring uh, whether it has anything or not, but you know, just kind of throw it in there. Now keep in mind, the less manpower units you have, the less food you'll make. You can see it directly correlated right here. 1, 96, 20, 3,500. Now, by upgrading this agriculture, you add bonuses to it, which basically can lead to you having more food. But at the end of the day, 
if you have no manpower units in a region, you will not be producing any food in a region because you don't have any farmers, to put it simply. So that's pretty straightforward. And the same applies to like upgrading uh, building units. If you don't have any manpower, uh, basically, in a region, let's take Moscow, for example, we have 1,340. If we manage to use, well, that's just the skilled labor. Unskilled labor, we have 4,917. So if we use up all of our unskilled labor, not only will we not be producing any food, but we won't have any manpower units to build an army. As you can see, every unit costs some sort of manpower. Conscripts are 40, and just about everything else is 10. And the same applies if you go over here to Air Force, and the same will apply to Navy. And we'll even take a look at that real quick just to kind of show it. See, battleships 2. Uh, transports zero, so on and so forth. Now, it also costs manpower units to upgrade your cities. See, 30. It requires 30 of those. Now, let's check out this region. Smolensk, for example, has 116. Now, it can upgrade past those 116, but what will start happening is that it will start sapping manpower units from the other regions around it. And then in turn, the same happens if we start upgrading Tula, for example, to high manpower, uh, to higher industrial levels. It will suck manpower out of the other regions around you. And so on and so forth. Again, this is a process that continues over the entire map. And again, with the Soviet Union, you have a lot of potential to expand, a lot of ability to get bigger. So, with that said, remember what we did before when we upgraded all this stuff. And let's go ahead and end our turn and watch how things change. See, look at that. It changed. Do it one more time. As you can see, it's slowly getting higher and higher because it's building. It's slowly building. And the same goes with fuel. See? We're maximizing the output and all these different uh, oil derricks here. So we can watch minus 10, bam, minus 2. Now remember, it costs money to do this. So every time you go up, this, and like for example, manpower units also go into the uh, basically improving these, these rates. You also have to remember though your manpower is constantly growing and you can see that we have a labor pool of 77,000 in uh, Soviet Russia so you're not exactly short on the amount of men you can pump out however it should be noted that you can technically run out of men and that can be an issue uh, with too much industrialization generally what I'll do is I'll get most of my cities to 50 um, maybe a couple of them, maybe no more than five, up to numbers close to 100. Uh, and I'll stop industrializing. Even though I have the potential to have more industrial output, there's no point for it. Um, because you're well outspecced compared to you, the um, AI players in this case. Now, if you play with actual human players, it's a different story. Human players may be a little bit more aggressive. They may be more active or whatever. And, you know, they may decide, hey, we have more industrial output. We've got 5,000 industrial output, a completely insane amount uh, for any one nation that hasn't conquered anything else. But, you know, hey, whatever, that's what we do. <laughs> anyway, so let's focus for a second on actual industrialization. Industrialization is what can lead you to having a bigger army, more research, more goods, so on and so forth. Now, there's problems with industrialization. Industrializing a city, as I was speaking before on manpower units, saps manpower units from your labor pool, which basically means you're producing less food. But you still require more goods the higher you go. For example, let's go ahead and industrialize these three cities from light industry to heavy industry, and we'll see what happens. Minus one. Nothing changed that turn. Minus one again. So now we're down to negative 10. And as we keep ending turns, we can watch very slowly the food pool change. Minus 11. 
and so on. Now, of course, we're going to keep trying to upgrade stuff, and hopefully, you know, that'll make up for the loss. But, you know, there's no guarantee that it will. And even then, uh, what you can do to try to circumvent that is we can go to the World Trade, and if there's any food, you can go to Trade, and you can buy some. Unfortunately, right now, there is no food. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a request on the market for 300 food because food is a really good thing to stockpile. If you run out of food, you start inhibiting manpower growth, which you'll see right here. As you can see, it shows our food supply level at 100%, so we're good right now. Now, a lot of people ask about money. Money is an interesting subject. The reason why, later on in the game, a lot of people feel like they don't have any money anymore is because they're doing what we're doing right now. As you can see, I'm industrializing these cities. When you industrialize cities and in making history gold, it costs money. And like when you get to this level, heavy industry, it effectively becomes more expensive to have this, especially when you get to advanced infantry, or excuse me, industry. So like a city like Moscow right now is advanced industry, and it's incredibly expensive. I don't exactly have an, an exact number, but trust me on this, it's really expensive. And even then, building troops, it doesn't seem apparent but all soldiers that you build get a or they have an upkeep cost. Generally, I think it's around it's either 100,000 or 1 million. Different troop types have different costs. So it can get a little expensive over time. The ways to make money in this game are try to have positive resources. Right now, we have positive metals, positive foods, and positive coal. Now, we have positive food cuz we're buying it from the market. So we don't want to go and sell that. But we can go and sell something else that we have that's not on the market. Uh, oil, for example. We can go, offer on the market. We'll sell 50 of it. That's 2.5 million a turn. We'll make, and bam, people are buying it because they need that oil. So that's just kind of a basic idea. You can also sell things like arms. Arms, foods, and goods are worth the most on the market. So let's go sell 30 arms. That's worth 12 million a turn. And I guarantee, yeah, look at that. Someone picked it right up. No hesitation because arms are very needed. So this is kind of just a basic little tutorial on how this game works. I know this is kind of simple and it doesn't explain some of the finer details. If you have questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, I'll try to help you out as best as I can. But realistically, I think this is enough to get you started, or at least if you decide to get the game, to give, like, explain more of the inner workings of it. And yeah, like I said, I really do hope it helps. Just remember, keep track of your money. You need money in this game um, because it starts affecting your deficit spending, your IPUs, your, your industry. So like, if you go below this penalty, which is $1 billion, um, you know, you take a 1% like hit to your IPUs. 1% is not that bad. But when you start getting down to 10%, you start running into issues. So, you know, keep your eyes on it. Be sure to just sell arms, goods, so on. Something else I want to mention real quick before I go. Another way to produce money is actually to build goods. Goods, aside from just selling them, just building them produces income again it's something that's not exactly shown but it is there so for example if I take these cities which I've been using to industrialize let me end this turn just to make sure we're clear we're making 28 right so I'm gonna swap this over to goods I'm gonna swap this guy over to goods as well and I'm gonna swap this guy over to goods so we're basically we're effectively producing 35 33 more goods than we were before. So let's watch what happens to our balance. It's at 28 million right now, and it's at 37 million now. So you see that building goods alone will increase your income. So you know that's kind of another another way you can circumvent that. Remember, building armies, even researching, costs money in this game. 
So for example, if I want to research this, it's going to cost two million a turn to research improved infantry. So this is, like I said, this has been Commissar Bro. I hope this helps you. And uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. But anyway, I will see you guys next time.